Hey everybody, welcome to The Mountain Gamer. Today I'm taking a look at a solo variant for Arctic Scavengers. Now, I love Arctic Scavengers. I actually bought the game, I think, five minutes after Shut Up and Sit Down released their glowing review of the game. If you haven't seen that review, go check it out. It's about as good as playing the game. Anyway, I love the game. I've played it a lot, but it's not seeing the table as much these days, so I decided to come up with a solo variant. Now, it turns out that when the Recon expansion came out, that came with a solo mode, but that is not very good, I'm sorry to say. It doesn't feel like the game, it feels like something else. So um, it kind of forced me to create my own uh, solo variant in which you would be doing something that felt like you were playing the game. I'll show you how it works. I did an almost full playthrough. You can check that out. You can skip the boring bits because yes, sometimes I get in my own head and I get boring. Sorry about that. So check it out and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so here's the setup for this quick and dirty solo version. Firstly, uh, the human player, that is you, will start with a standard base game deck. So, four refugees, three scavengers, a brawler, a spear, and a shovel. As for the AI's deck, he will have three scavengers, three refugees, one brawler, one spear. Now, I like to put a rogue in there. Um, this is from the Recon expansion. If you do not have Recon, change this up for anything else, really. I mean, you could put in a Brawler, but he's going to be a bit tougher to beat. But then again, the Rogue has this funky ability here. So a Brawler or maybe a Group Leaders, honestly, anything you want. And last, I use Tear Gas. Tear Gas is almost like a Sniper. So if you do not have Tear Gas, which is in Recon, um, you can use the Sniper Team and just pop it in there. It won't break the game or anything. It's, you know, it's okay. It, this is a quick and dirty solo version. As for the junk pile, you can set the junk pile up any way you want, really. Um, I use the standard two-player setup where we remove like two copies of every card. But honestly, you can set that up any way you want. The contested resources. I put 15 cards in here because I find that that's a good length for the game for me. It's about half an hour, 40 minutes, so 15 cards, that's what I use. Um, you do have to respect the ratio of 2 to 1, in the sense that there are 10 cards that have population and 5 cards that have no population. Now, again, if you're playing with only the base game, you'll be missing a card. You'll, you'll only have 14. So to compensate for that, um, I mean, either remove one of those with population or add something to those four. You could add any tool that you find in the junk pile, get something funky, put it in there. So 10 cards with population, five cards without. We'll get that a good shuffle. Now, before you put those down, well, I mean, as you're putting those down, you're going to be doing 10 cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And then on top of that, you'll be putting the white card here that usually serves no purpose. And that will tell you that there are, actually put it face up like this. It'll tell you that there's 10 rounds left. And it'll do something else too. It'll, you know, it'll make a rule change um, within the game, but I'll get to that when we get to that. You will have a, you will need a D6, which I call the action die for the AI, and either another D6 or a D8 or a D10 or a D12, and that's gonna be the higher die. In this example here, I have 10 mercenaries, therefore I'm using a D10. One last thing I forgot to mention, you can play with buildings. Uh, I chose not to, but it doesn't break the game or anything. The AI doesn't get to build buildings, but you still do, so that's fine. Now, um, I play with gangs too. Farmers and gearheads. So these are the guys that like tools and they like the meds. I do not play with the masons because as the AI will not get to make any buildings, if you play with buildings, you're getting like basically a five point at the end of the game for, you know, no effort at all. So I'm not using the masons. So these two, let's put them up here. In terms of rules, um, you will need a fight value of two or more in order to get the contested resources. Population will break ties. 
the human player will play with standard rules and there is peeking at the contested resource when it is your turn. When it's the AI's turn, you know, you're not going to know what's under there, but when it is your turn, you still get to peek. The rest of the game pretty much plays the same. I mean, the AI does his own thing, and I'll show you that later. Um, just like in, regu in a regular game, the first three rounds, there are no skirmishes, but you will play normally, so, you know, you'll dig, you'll hire, etc. And starting with the fourth round, there will be a skirmish. And also, I like to use just a poker chip to track if it's either the AI's turn or my turn. So, with that, let's get going. Let's draw my five cards. Okay. I mean, I could dig for two. Maybe make two foods. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's let's dig for two. Let's see what we get. Oh, good. Junk. Oh, good. <laughs> Junk. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be keeping that. Thanks, game. And then I'll be doing... Um, yeah, we'll make two food to hire a brawler. So that's us. We just hired that. Now, as far as the AI goes, for the first three rounds, you're not going to be using the action die, so let's just put that aside. What you will be doing is just cycling five cards. One, two, three, four, five, and you will roll the higher die. In this case, he got a four, so one, two, three, four. He hires a hunter. We'll put that in his discard. So the first turn is over. We'll move that over here to signify that the AI is the first player. And again, on his turn, he'll cycle. One, two, three, four, five, and he will hire seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, good, an assassin. Yeah, he'll be using that later on. As for us, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, we could dig for three, maybe go get some meds, because what I like to do often is kind of go for the thugs, and you need a lot of meds for that. So you know what? Let's dig for three. One, two, three. So what do we got here? A multi-tool, very useful. Food, digging. I think I'm going to go for the food, the net. Yeah, so I'm going to keep the net. Put the rest under here. And discard the rest. I forgot to mention that you can play with the uh, leaders if you want. I mean, the AI is not going to get a leader, but you can get one. It'll make the game slightly easier, but, you know, sometimes that's okay. So we're at round three, and I'm the first player, so I'll give that a quick shuffle here. Now, the first three rounds are, you know, a little bit samey and boring, but that's, I mean, even, even when you're playing with people, that's always the way it is. Things get crunchier when you get to the skirmish. So... Let's get the five cards here. One, two, three, four, five. Man, I got a lot of refugees. Yeah, see, when you're playing with a leader, that's the good thing. You can trash those guys to do something. But anyways, um, pop, 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 pop. we could dig for two. I really want to get some meds. I think I'm going to do that. I'll dig for two. Oh, good, pills. Oh, good, med kit. Cha-ching. So I'm going to use that. Keep that, I mean. Put that underneath. And then... I'm gonna make one food to hire another one of these scavengers. Okay, so my turn is over. As for the AI, well, he's got no more drop aisle, so let's just give that a quick shuffle. So he's gonna be cycling five cards. He will hire numero uno, scavenger. Okay, so now we've done three rounds. Fourth round, it's his turn. So what the AI will be doing on his turn is first he will roll the action die. Now I'll put a grid on screen, a little information on screen to tell you what's going to happen, but you roll this. Now it's a four, so that means he will draw four cards for the skirmish. And with a four, he will also hire. Number six, one, two, three, four, five, uh, not this. So six, provocateur, put that here. This is the part that I like with my solo variant here, is that now, because I know there's going to be a skirmish, and I mean, it's his turn, so we cannot look at the contested resource, but because I know we're fighting for something, and I know he's got four cards for his skirmish, I can now try and plan, am I going to try to beat him at the skirmish or not? 
I mean, if you had just one card here set aside for the skirmish, then I would probably go all in and just try and kick his butt to get the contested resource. But with four, it's like, ah, what does he have, right? But it is early days in the game, so these could be just refugees or it could be, you know, crap. So this is where the game gets interesting. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to get my five cards. One, two, three, four, five. So, like, could I, could I take him on in a fight? I mean, I think so at this point. Right? One, two, three, four, five. I could actually try and kick his butt for five. But I don't know what's there. It could be one of those five meh cards, you know what I mean? So what I like to do usually is try to at least hire one guy and then fight. So let's try that. I'm going to um, make a food to hire at least one guy. Because at the end of the game, what you're trying to do is get the most victory points, right? The most population. Same thing with, with him. He's going to try and beat you with this. So I'm hiring for one. And then I'll say, this is my fight. So one, two, three, four, five. So then you reveal what the AI has. Okay, one fight, two fight. He can snipe. Okay, so he goes first because he has this, he's the first player. So you're gonna have a bit of thinking to do, like if you were a real player, I mean, this is not 100% automated, but you try to play it as best as you can. Like if you were the AI, what would you do? So snipe any single unit tribe member. Would he do that? Well, yeah. So who would he snipe? I think he would snipe the guy who's got the highest fight value. So he snipes that. So he's at a commission. Well, he's removed from the fight actually. And then let's check the score. So I have one, two, three. Well, not even. Sorry. I probably made a mistake here. This always gets attached to someone who has a fight value. You all know that. So I have three as a fight value, and he's got one, two. Oh, well, turns out I win, but no, because we have to win by population two or more, a fight value two or more. I win, but I don't get the contested resource, so blah. So you take that, and you shuffle it in the junk pile. This is standard game stuff, like when you're playing a two-player game, if you don't win by at least uh, two of fight value, then you have to shuffle the contested resource in the junk pile. Okay, so that was kind of a crap turn for us, but at least we hired somebody. So we'll discard everything here. Okay, and now I am the first player, so I get to peek at what's here. Ooh, it's one of those useless tribe families, but you know, four points at the end of the game. So let's put that face up to just remind myself what I'm playing for. And let's draw. Got this here. Let's shuffle, 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 shuffle. Three, four, and five. Okay, this seems like a very fighty turn. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, yeah. I mean, now because I'm the first player, I don't know if he's gonna have a buttload of cards here to fight with. I just don't know that yet because he hasn't played. But I'm feeling pretty confident that I can win this. So I'm not gonna hire anything. I'm gonna say this is for the skirmish. So now on his turn, he'll roll the action die. It's a three. Now on a three, he will draw three cards. So you know, we'll probably win this. So three cards and he's gonna hire seven. So six, seven, <laughs> an assassin again. And now we, uh, we fight, we skirmish. Now you're gonna set the cards up just like if this was a regular player. So obviously the spear on its own does nothing. So it's attached to a scavenger. So he's got one, two, three, four, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Ka-ching. Good, good, good. So we actually do win this because we had two or more. Yes, very nice. We'll drop that over here. Now he's got no more cards, so we'll shuffle. Okay, so he's the first player. We roll this. Two. Oh, this is looking very well for me. So two, he's going to put two cards aside for the skirmish. That means it's going to be easy to beat. But he will hire for four, which would be this. And he will also dig two cards in the junk pile. Boom, boom. And this goes in his discard. Now, what this does when he digs, 
Obviously, it can help him for endgame scoring with the gearheads and the farmers, because if he's picking up meds and tools, you will be calculating this. The downside is, for him, is he's picking up, like if he's picking up meds, yes, it helps for the farmers, but when you're putting these cards on the table for the skirmish, when you reveal meds, they're not hurting you, they're not doing anything. So it kind of clutters up his deck. But anyway, for now, he's got two cards. He hired, and he did some digging in the junk pile. And now, we don't know what's there in the contested resource because he was the first player, so we just go with our five cards and try to make the best of it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. These guys are useless again. Um, so I could do two meds, two food. What can we get for two med, two food? I could get a sniper team. Me likey snipers. But me likey group leaders too. Um, ah, sniping is just so much fun. So let's, And it's two victory points. So two population. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, two meds, two foods. That's good. I could set these guys aside for the fight, and I, I will, even though, you know, nothing's going to happen, unless we each get zero and then population breaks ties. I don't know. We'll see. So skirmish is on. Let's see what he got. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's got three. I've got zero. So he definitely wins that one. So contested resource in his discard pile. Good job, AI. All right. A few rounds of Arctic Scavengers later. This is the end of the eighth round. So let's say the it was the AI's turn and he just finished kicking my butt and he won a tribe family. So we'll put that in his discard. This would go on to me. And now before I can peek at the contested uh, resource, we see that there's the white card here signifying the start of the ninth turn. So we'll take that off. And now what this means is starting from now, Every time the AI in a skirmish uh, reveals a card that has no population and no fight value, you remove it from the game. So, uh, you know, if it's a refugee, that's fine. It's got a population, even though it's got no fight. But if it's uh, meds, you remove that. Or if it's anything else that has no population and no fight, you kick it out. That's just to get the AI to, to start like thinning his deck and making his deck a little bit more lean. So with that in mind, um, let's continue playing a few rounds. So I'm first, I get to peek at the contested resource. Oh, field crew, gotta love the field crew. Okay, so I'll go with my five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Ah yes, the ever useless tribe family. <laughs> I mean, what I really wanna do is win that, but three, four, I've got four as far as fight. I don't know what he's gonna get, but probably more than four. I don't know. Do I chance it? Should I chance it? Okay, this... Okay, what I'm gonna do is... Because I really want that, so I'll try it. I'll use the pills to get me a... Either a hunter or a provocateur. I think I'll get a hunter because eventually I want to get a lot of foods and a lot of meds to get me some thugs, which require a combination of all that for six. So yeah, I'll get me a hunter. And I'll keep this for the fight, even though I have a slim chance at winning. And let's see what he's going to do. Uh, let's roll the action die. Three. Okay, so three is pretty good. Three is only three cards for him. And then he will hire. That's hiring nine. So six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, oh, man, he just made two points. Okay. That's bad. And when we roll a three, yeah, he just hires. He won't dig. Okay, so let's let's skirmish. Let's see what he's got. Pills, okay, good. Junk, beauty. And a hunter. Okay, so like in this case, as we said, because this is up there, we're gonna get rid of that. So that's never gonna come back into his hand. And he's got a fight value of one. I have three, four. So that's good, I beat him, and I beat him by two or more. So that's mine, baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, let's go to the next round. It's going to be his... Uh, he's the first player, so we cannot peek at that. Let's roll his action die. One. That's extremely good for us. Extremely bad for him. When you roll a one, you pick two cards here for him, for the skirmish. Then you, then you roll the action die. I'm sorry, the higher die. He hires a medic. And he will also dig for two. 
So what are we doing here? He's got two cards for the skirmish. And what are we doing here? Okay, the map is nice. Now, if you don't have the recon expansion, the map is pretty cool. Let me show you up here. So you can play this along with the tribe member and it says return one tribe member to your hand after performing a non-skirmish action. So basically you're sending a guy do something and then you discard that and you can use that guy again. It's pretty nice. So what do we have here? If we really want to fight, we've got two attacks and a snipe. I mean, we can probably do this, right? So I think what I would do is um, I've got three food here. Hmm. Let me think about this. Okay, let's not, I mean, let's not go crazy. Look, I'm going to send the scavenger with the map to go hire another one of the scavengers. And he'll come back to my hand and I'll discard the map. And then I'll just say that all of this is for my fight. Why am I keeping the medic? Well, because if he's got a sniper, I can save one tribe member from the effects of a snipe. So let's keep that and let's see what he's got. Tear gas. Oh, and a refugee. Okay, so he can't fight, but he is the first player, so he will use tear gas, select one opponent's tribe member, and reduce its fight or bonus to fight to zero. Um, it's potato, 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 I mean, so he'll snipe this guy. And this cannot be used by anyone, so it goes away. And then what do we have, really? Oh, no, hold on. Oh, no. Yeah, true. I was going to say, oh, I'll use that guy to save him. No, you can't save. You can save against a snipe, not against tear gas. So that's fine. Uh, then it comes back to my turn. I could snipe his refugee just because. And then what do we have? We both have a fight value of zero. So that would mean that it's a tie and population breaks ties. So I would get that. Now, some of you might argue, or I, I'm not sure what the actual rules say. I think when everybody's got zero, it's just, it's a flat out tie and nobody can win it. But at my house, we usually play that. If you get zero and I get zero, it's considered a tie and hence population breaks ties. Therefore, I will get that. What was it? Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah, so that's basically it. I mean, we can play just one other round really quick. Get the hang of it. Uh, it's our turn, we can peek. We're fighting for a grenade, which is nice, but it's not gonna give us any victory points. So let's see what else we can do. Oh boy, that's, uh, that's, that's a crap hand. We can fight for three, and we can make two foods. I think we're just gonna try and fight for three, just to get that grenade, that could be kinda cool. Yeah, why not? And then let's see what he's gonna do. Maybe that was dumb, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. That was probably very dumb. So four, he's got four cards. One, two, three, four. And when he gets four, he gets the higher. Higher's a three, that's not too bad. That's just one victory point for him at the end, or a population point. And let's fight. A rogue, a provocateur, a refugee, and a scavenger. Okay, so I'm first, but I cannot activate anything here. And what about him? He's got one, two, three. I've got one, two, three, four. Okay, I mean, I win, but I would not get the contested resource because we need to win by two. What can he do? He can use his tribe, members, uh, tribe member count in place of his fight score. That wouldn't really help him. Well, he'd get four, one, two, three, four. And we'd have one, two, three, four. So that would be an actual tie. And then if there is a tie for highest fight score, you win the skirmish. So, yeah, he would do that. Okay, so he wins the skirmish. Well, whatever, he wins a grenade. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so I'm going to end it here and we'll go back up top to, uh, to talk about this. But uh, yeah, I hope this gives you a good idea of how this quick and dirty uh, solo variant plays. So the main takeaway with this thing is I was trying to replicate the feeling that I had when I was playing Arctic Scavengers. I like the feeling of like, if I go first, I don't know what my opponent's going to do. But if I go last or second or whatever, it's like I can see 
what my opponent has. Like, oh man, he's got three, three or four cards. Am I going to be able to beat him? So I wanted to replicate that. So give it a try if you want to. If you want to up the difficulty or something, just you know, put you know, exchange a scavenger for a brawler inside the AI's deck, or put in another sniper. You know, just play around, have fun. It's open source, and let me know if you do modify it. I, I want to know these things. Now. I went a little bit crazy and I thought, could we not do a solo version where we're all playing together against the AI? Well, it turns out you can, but not with this one. I'm going to release another video in which I'm going to show you a whole expansion where you can all play co-op against a really mean AI. And he's got his own set of cards and there's like two or three new mechanics and all that. I'll release that soon and uh, I, I hope you enjoy that one. But in the meantime, have fun and I'll see you on the next one. And the sun is coming out.